My name is Joshua Burks, and this is Emmaus Presents. Hi, and thanks for joining for our final installment on our Emmaus Presents discussion on the Beatitudes. Today's video will treat the final two Beatitudes found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Now remember, when we look at the Beatitudes as a whole, they are shaping what it looks like to be a disciple in God's kingdom. So when we are called to live in the kingdom of God, we are called to be more than just citizens. We are called to live as sons and daughters. Also, let's keep in mind, that when we discuss the Beatitudes, that each Beatitude is perfectly taken up and fulfilled in the person and character of Jesus Christ. So when we look at Matthew 5, 9, that describes the peacemakers as the sons of God, who is the true Son of God? Jesus Christ. And what does he give us? He gives us his peace. Revealing God as our Father and revealing our identity as his sons and daughters is core to the gospel message. St. Paul tells us that we did not receive a spirit of slavery, but we received a spirit of sonship by which we can now call God our Father. And it is by that spirit of sonship that we can live in God's peace. Now, what does it mean to live in God's peace? It may not be the definition that immediately comes to our mind when we think of the word peace. Often we think of the word peace and we think of a lack of conflict, but that is not the peace of God. The peace of God is not the absence of something, but it's the presence of something. More specifically, the presence of someone. Jesus tells us, my peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. He doesn't tell us, absence of conflict I give to you. He says, my peace I give to you. St. Augustine defines this peace as tranquility of order. So when we live in our true identity as sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, we live in God's peace. And by that virtue, we live in God's order. So let us think of peace as living in the right order of God and living in our true identity as his sons and daughters. Because Jesus assures us his peace, but he doesn't assure us a lack of conflict. In fact, that's one of the reasons why he moves into the next and final beatitude that addresses those who possess God's peace but encounter conflict in this world. The next and last beatitude in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This last beatitude flips the order of natural thinking. Who possesses the kingdom of heaven? It's not the rich the powerful, the wealthy, or those of great status. Rather, it is those of lowly status, the lowliest status of those who are persecuted. If you have been following along on our series on the Beatitudes, you will recall that we began our discussion on the Beatitudes, describing them as an invitation to participate in the life and character of Jesus Christ. That is the note that I would like to end on with our final Beatitude here. Because who is the ultimate righteous man who suffered and now possesses the kingdom of God in its fullness? Who other than Jesus Christ? The Beatitudes call us to share in the life and character of Jesus Christ. And that ultimately means that we will share in his suffering and in his persecution. Someone who knew this very well was none other than St. Paul himself. St. Paul knew very well that the kingdom of God was not a matter of eating or drinking or being as comfortable as you can or sitting around idly. No, he knew that the kingdom of God was a matter of participating in the life of Christ. And ultimately for Paul, that means sharing in his sufferings. This is why St. Paul was able to give the famous verse of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, one of my personal favorites. St. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 
St. Paul knew that to participate and to unite his sufferings to Jesus Christ meant an outpouring of himself, just as Jesus outpoured himself on the cross. To be crucified with Christ and to share in the life of Christ means to share also in the self-emptying of Christ, even to the point of rejection and suffering. St. Paul never feared the face of persecution or rejection or suffering amidst his gospel ministry. In fact, you could say that it was his very persecution and rejection that made his gospel ministry so effective and so full of grace. St. Paul was so willing to unite his life and his hardships to that of Christ's that it led him to the ultimate sacrifice and self-emptying. It led him to the point of martyrdom. St. Paul ran the race to the end, and I'm sure when he met his Lord and Savior on the other end, he heard those ever-consoling words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come and enter the joy of your master. I'm so thankful for the time that we've had together on this Emmaus Presents series on the Beatitudes. I hope that it's been as enriching for you as it has been for me. If you would like to continue your journey of deepening your knowledge and study of scripture, I encourage you to visit our website at EmmausInstitute.net, where you'll find various opportunities and resources for knowledge and study of scripture. Thank you so much for spending this time with us in Emmaus Presents. God bless you.